This is Michelle Sam from Sammy Wong's Kitchen. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to do a series of dim sum recipes. A few weeks ago, I had the privilege of going up to a relative's house to learn how to make the Wong family dumpling filling. And this is by far the best filling you're ever going to taste. Each individual ingredient contributes its own unique taste and texture to this filling and in my opinion should be the murepoix for all Chinese dumpling fillings. So tie up your hair, tie on an apron and come into my kitchen and let's get started. Welcome to Sammy Wong's kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make the filling for these fried glutinous rice dumplings known as ham soy gok. Here are all the ingredients that require dicing. For the pork, I am going to slice this chunk first and then briefly cook it in the microwave before dicing it finely. This is the Chinese style bacon or lapiok that we're going to dice. Lapcheong, Chinese sausage. Cut it up into quarters and then dice it. Tonggu or shiitake mushrooms. After about a minute in the microwave, these pork slices are still underdone, but you will notice that the fat firms up when it's slightly cooked, making it easier to dice. In order to get to a fine ground, I'm going to use a Chinese cleaver and just chop it up. For this, I'm going to put it back into its juices. And there, I'm going to be adding the a little bit of flavoring, not too much. I'm just going to add it some salt and pepper. allow that to soak and marinate cooked and then I'm going to chop the rest of the other ingredients so for the scallions I'm going to cut about an inch off from the base actually if you want to grow scallions you can place these roots in a little bit of water and wait until the roots grow and then plant it in your soil have some more scallions so these this is three scallions and I'm just gonna go ahead and chop them so the easiest way to peel a shallot is to just cut it in half and then get the dry parts off and it's okay if you remove one or two of the outer skins. Okay, now that I've peeled the dry skins off of the shallots, you notice I've left the part where the root is on the actual shallots, and this can be applied to onions as well. And if you want to dice or slice the onions, um, and you're going with the grain, it is easier to keep this and so that it'll just secure the entire shallot while you cut it. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just demo on this one. I'm going to remove this part because we don't need it. But what I'm going to try to do is make sure that my knife doesn't cut through the entire uh, shallot, but it gets to be, let me use this knife, it'll be easier to see. So it'll only go through there. So I'll cut there and then I'll just keep and make sure I don't cut right through so my and my shallot is always secure. All right, so now that it's all sliced this way, I'm going to slice it in the size that I want. So I probably want about a little less than half an inch or one centimeter. And I don't start off with the root part because I want to keep my, my shallot intact. So now you see that this is all diced. I'm going to do it here and then lastly I can just cut around the root and that'll get rid of this and you, there might be one part where it still is intact you can just go ahead and slice it that way but then here you have your diced shallots okay and lastly, what I'm going to do is dice the jicama. First, it needs to be peeled and then diced. And just go ahead and run your cleaver along them. They should be about a quarter inch dice. So now we're ready to fry up our ingredients. Just need to uh, rinse out the salted turnip and then we'll be ready to go. I have my skillet that is over medium low heat and I am going to first cook my Chinese bacon and Chinese sausage so that the fat can render. Now be careful not to put it on too high heat, otherwise your sausage and your um, bacon, your lap chung and your lap yolk will burn. Just put that aside and then this is the partially cooked pork that I have diced. <clears throat> I'm just cooking everything there. And then I'll just mix it until it's cooked. Once it's cooked, I'm going to use a slotted spoon to remove it into the bowl. And the reason I'm using a slotted spoon is so that the fat that has been rendered can remain in the pan. We have enough fat here so we can cook the sh shallots first. And the shallot should be a little less than half an inch thick. That is the optimal size for the dumpling. So when it's caramelized, the onion um, is translucent or the shallots are translucent. So wait until they are translucent and this is when um, the sugars in the shallot start to cook making it sweeter. The non-stick pan also prevents the 
ingredients from sticking to the pan um, without using too much oil, but it is not necessary to use the nonstick pan. We are not stir frying the mixture, so it is not going to be at high heat. And okay, now that the onion is nicely caramelized, I am going to add the shiitake mushroom and the salted turnip and the dried shrimp. Now, you don't even have to really cook this because it's going to get cooked when you make the dumplings. And then lastly, at the end, I'm going to add the green onion. And the reason I'm adding the green onion or scallions at the end, I feel that if you add it with the shallots, it somehow loses its color. And I don't want to lose the color. And just a quick stir, and that's it. Turn it, turn the stove off. And then I'm gonna add this to the meat mixture. Um, I'm not gonna cook it, but I'm just basically gonna add it together. And then after I've added this together, then I am going to add my um, raw jicama. And the reason I'm adding it raw is because I wanna still keep the crunch of the jicama. I'm gonna add the jicama here. And give this mixture a mix. So like I said in the intro, this dumpling filling is so good. Each individual ingredient contributes its own unique taste and texture to the filling. And you can see that the colors are still there and the textures. Um, and it just looks really pretty as well. Okay, so I'm going to taste this just to make sure it's good. And if necessary, then I'll add some salt and pepper. Hmm. It tastes really good. This, I think there's enough salt, but I think it could use a little pepper. So this is really up to your discretion. So I use white pepper. We get another spoon. Mm. Perfect. There's sweet, there's salty, there's umami, there's crunch, and a little bit of heat, pepper. So we're ready to fill our dumplings. <laughs>